Everyone's uh, in gear for AFC 11 taking place this Saturday night. And one of the fights I am looking forward to the absolute most is the matchup between Christina Berry, who will be making her pro debut at the event, and a fighter that I am fortunate enough to have on the line right now, none other than Sarah Cheesecake Morris. How are you doing today, Sarah? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this event Saturday night. And uh, you have to be excited to be a part of this. Yeah, I'm super stoked. It's awesome just to get right back in there after my last fight with Invicta. So I'm just so excited. And I'm excited for you. And I have to ask right out of the gate here, why Cheesecake? Um, I came out to a song called Cheesecake by the Muppets for my first pro fight. <laughs> and, like, everywhere on the internet after that it said... Sarah Cheesecake Morris, and people that had nicknames that didn't have their nicknames beside it. I was the only one with the nickname beside it, and it wasn't even my nickname. So I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't want to give myself a nickname, and I just, you know, it sort of just happened. So, <laughs> Well, you decided to, to run with the momentum anyway, and it's definitely memorable. Uh, one thing, though, Misha Tate has now taken to calling herself Cupcake. So any desire to fight her just for infringing on your gimmick? <laughs> I actually trained with her, like, the week before she fought, and then after that, she be she decided to become Cupcake, I guess. I think I'm rubbing off on her or something. I think so, and I think we've got a tremendous potential battle of the cakes somewhere down the line. Yeah, that, I like that. I have trained with her, and I'm sure I'll train with her again, but, I mean, she's very talented, and I'd love to get the chance to fight her. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm kidding around here, of course. But in all seriousness, uh, how does a nice girl from the Sunshine Coast of BC wind up in the sport of mixed martial arts? How did you know I was from the Sunshine Coast? Oh, I know these things. <laughs> um, I didn't live there very long, but I, I just a guy I was seeing was a fighter and just told me to come check out a class. I wanted to be a firefighter, but I was too young, so I thought I'd get in shape, just do some like jujitsu. And then, like, 11 months later, I was fighting. My coach was like, I got you a fight. I was like, I'm not ready. He's like, I already said yes, so you can back out if you want. And I said, I'm not fucking backing out. So I fought, and I won. So, so there wasn't even a real desire to compete at that point in your training? It was just something that uh, your coach signed you up for, and you saw your name on the bottom line and decided, well, I'm not backing down. Yeah, pretty much. And now I just love it, so... Yeah, I'm glad he did that for me. Yeah, well, it's, it's a great story. That's uh, that's definitely for sure. But your training really picked up in England uh, where uh, you had the opportunity to train under Rosie Sexton. Uh, how did you get that opportunity? Uh, it was actually through Facebook. I had my second amateur fight in Canada, and then after that I had a few people add me to Facebook from the U.S., and one of them told me, was like, man, Rosie's looking for, like, a female training partner. She's got a spare room and stuff. You should go out there. So I sort of, like, looked up Rosie and who she was and found out how awesome she was. And I should have known that before. But so I added her on Facebook, and I told her, I was like, if you're serious about this, like, I'll totally come out. And she was like, yep. So I bought a plane ticket, and I went out there. And I was only going to stay for a few months, but I ended up staying almost a year. So I just had the time of my life with her. Wow, Facebook really does bring people together, doesn't it? Oh, man, I owe my life to Facebook. <laughs> what was it like training under Rosie, and how did it affect your mindset about the sport? Um, it was very awesome training with Rosie. She's so talented, and she gave me so many awesome pointers that helped me get to where I am today. Um, what was the other part of that question? How did it affect your uh, mindset about the sport? I, it was pretty awesome, like especially when I was fighting with her and like training with her because when I fought, I knew she was at the top, you know. So anyone that I fought wasn't going to do to me what she does to me. So I had that confidence that I had everything done to me by a female. I knew female strength and everything. So it was just, it was awesome, and I had so much confidence training with her. Yeah, and yet you continued to build upon that training when you came back to Canada, joining up with the famed Toshido camp in BC, uh, the, uh, the same camp that spawned welterweight phenom Rory McDonald. How has the crew at Toshido uh, helped you to continue to evolve your game? Toshido's been absolutely amazing. It's, 
it's done exactly how it's supposed to be at the gym. I've always wanted to open up my own gym until I came to Toshido. And it's just, it's all done exactly how I'd want it to be done. We train hard, you know, we train properly. And it's just a bunch of great people with great attitudes that want to fight and want to kick some serious ass. So it's, it's exactly like what I always dreamt of. So it's, I just love it so much. I love going there every single day. And I hate the weekends when there's no classes. <laughs> And it clearly is paying dividends for you. You really started getting noticed in the MMA world uh, with your victory over Juliana Pena. Uh, a lot of people were favoring Pena in that fight, but you really put the stamp on her from the get-go. And uh, the fight ended after the second round, of course, when you had that uh, arm bar on her and the doctor ruled uh, between rounds that the fight could no longer continue. I've read conflicting reports as to whether the arm was actually broken or not, but just take us back to that night and your memories of that fight. Um, that fight was pretty awesome. Like, I hadn't fought in almost two years. I had every single opponent back out on me, like, two weeks before the event or sooner. So I was so pumped to get that fight. I took it on eight days' notice, and I had a bunch of weight to drop for it. But actually fighting, it was awesome. I was, like, so ready and so in the zone. So when I fought her, I gave her, and it was it was awesome. Like, I was a bit scared. Especially, I got into some dominant positions where the ref didn't stop it, where I believe he should have had topside crucifix, and I was elbowing her in the face quite a bit in the first round, and the ref didn't stop it, so I knew the ref wasn't going to jump in anytime soon, at least, or at all, right? So I knew I had to make her quit. And then when I got that armbar and I heard it popping and everything and she wasn't tapping, I... I got scared because I didn't want it to go to to decision. I didn't want to leave it up to the judges in her hometown with her gym putting on the show. So I was relieved when the doctor stopped it. But, yeah, it was a pretty crazy fight. That, that was uh, that was an incredible fight and uh, really, like I say, put you on the map as far as uh, the, M the rest of the MMA world was concerned. And it may have been that fight that put you on the Invicta radar as well. You went and convicted uh, on Invicta 2, uh, taking on Raquel Pennington. Uh, how did you become involved with the Invicta promotion? Um, well, my coach, he started messaging them and talking to them. And he told me one day, he was like, yeah, we're probably, like, we're talking to Invicta about you and stuff, right? And I sort of just, you know, Invicta's pretty huge, even though they've only had two shows so far and one show at the time. But it was a big deal, right? So I just, I didn't think much of it. I thought, you know, like, he's saying that, he's talking to them, but why would they get me from Canada? There's so many talented females out there. And then I came into the gym one day, and he just told me, he's like, yeah, you're fighting on Invicta, here's a contract. And it just, it blew my mind that I got that opportunity to do that. It was amazing. Yeah, and what do you think of uh, the Invicta promotion? Uh, they're obviously blazing a trail as uh, the first all-female fight promotion, giving a, a lot of women exposure that uh, they wouldn't have got otherwise. Yeah, I I love it, and I'd love to be back there, and hopefully I will. It's, it's where it's at for women right now, I believe. Like, they treat the fighters right. You know, they they run it well. It's just a great promotion and great people, and it's so awesome. Like, being a female with a bunch of other females there that do what you do and to see everyone and how they are and just be around those people and that kind of vibe, it's just amazing. Yeah, and have you been in contact with Invicta since your fight there? Because I would love to see you in Invicta again. Um, uh, my coach does most of that stuff, so I believe he's probably talking to them a bit. I know I'm not on this next Invicta card, but I'm sure he's trying to get me back on there. Yeah, and I uh, would love to see that, but uh, I'm I'm sure you're focused, as as uh, the rest of the MMA world, on uh, taking on Christina Berry, uh, uh, AFC 11, this Saturday night in Winnipeg. And uh, this will be Berry's first professional fight but she's got uh you know a lot of uh, history behind her as far as jiu-jitsu training and muay thai training goes uh does that affect your game plan at all or are you just uh, training for this like it's any other fight um i'm training for this like it's any other fight for sure um i do understand her background and everything but i'm confident with what i have so i'm gonna do what i want to, to do going into this fight so 
well, we'll see how it all happens. But my game plan was this game plan actually even before I found out who my opponent was. So I'm looking forward to it for sure. And how does it feel to be finally fighting for AFC? You were set to have a bout for them in February, but unfortunately uh, your opponent had to pull, pull out during, uh, due, excuse me, due to family reasons. So you're finally getting your chance to, to fight under the AFC banner, and uh, what does that mean being there, one of the largest promotions in Western Canada? It's super awesome. Like, I never, even, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to fight in Canada again. There's not many females here, so it's, like, amazing that I'm getting this opportunity to fight in my own country. I haven't fought in Canada in, like, four years, and it was only amateur then, so... I'm super pumped and super excited that it's on AFC and everything. Yeah, and I'm excited to, as well. And I'm uh, sure your mother is excited as well. I actually saw a blog your mother did about your accomplishments in the sport. I thought that was fantastic. And how supportive has she been in your career? Um, she's been pretty supportive. She's kind of, you know, a mom. <laughs> so <laughs> she gets her ways and gets nervous and everything and doesn't really know how to react but she's getting a lot better and getting like used to the idea and really yeah she's doing she's being really supportive now so it's really good absolutely and i know you're focused on saturday night but uh, beyond saturday night where do you see yourself well, let's say one year from now where is sarah cheesecake morris um in a year, I'm not sure. I know I'm going to be fighting, and I want to be fighting the best in the world. So whether that's with Invicta or Strike Force, I want to be there, and I want to be fighting for the title. I want to be fighting the best and beat the best because I'm the best. Absolutely. I love hearing that, Sarah, and I wish you all the best of luck uh, going into Saturday night. Last question for you. It's uh, something that we ask everyone that comes on the program. If you had the opportunity, you get to punch one person from any walk of life right in the face, who would it be? <laughs> um, I don't think I can say that on here. Sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be who you'd expect it to be. It would be some, some family members, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then we'll keep that in the family. But I, I thank you for indulging me on that. Uh, okay, Sarah, thanks again. Uh, tell the people where they can find you in the social media universe, uh, the Twitter, the Facebook, uh, anything else you got going on. Yeah, um, follow me on Twitter at Sarah Cheesecake, I believe, and on Facebook. Uh, my fan page is the Sarah Cheesecake Morris. So follow me there, and that's about it. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks again for joining us, and best of luck Saturday night. Sarah Cheesecake Morris here on In the Cage with Barbs on NextSportsStar.com, and we'll be back with more MMA action right after this.